games. Whoop, let's go. Uh, Hursty Games, and this is how we do. Now it's time we team hey, up. Hey guys, welcome back to Hursty Games, and welcome to a championship table prediction video with, with your boy, the main man himself, Mr. James, aka J Beck. How you doing, my dude? I'm good, my friend. How are you doing? I am doing mighty fine. I'm hella excited mm -hmm. for the championship to start. Now, to put a little bit of a timestamp on this, we're recording this just before the first Saturday games of the season. So, uh, one game has already happened, Watford uh, and Middlesbrough, but we are otherwise completely blind in any other results. So, this will come up just after the first set of games, but we did record it before the first set of games. But we are going to go through the teams that we think from bottom to top, where they're going to finish, why, uh, give a couple of reasons. I have to say to you guys right now, expect very detailed opinions from James and expect me to go, yeah, same. Because that's what happened last time. <laughs> so expect that again. I don't know. I don't um, feel like I'm as in depth this year because it's been really quick turnover. But yeah, it it's been it proper is. quick, definitely. Yeah. So obviously, pinch of salt with our opinions. It is just our opinions. Last time we both had teams that we thought were complete opposite ends of the table to where they finished. So realistically, you know, it's it's just a bit of a guesswork uh, based off a little bit of an opinion or a little bit of knowledge and stuff. So fingers crossed we don't upset too many people. Let us know your predictions obviously down below. But if you're ready, mate, I think we just get straight into this, don't you? I think so, yeah. I think so. Right, go yeah. on then. 24th, who are the first set of fans we're offending? After you, mate. Who you've right, got so at the table? In 24th position, I think it's quite evident, really. Um, I'll start to go with Chef Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Just for the pure fact they've got minus 12 points and the championship is really hard to get points. And with that mentality they've got, they will want to get out of that deduction point zone. But realistically, when you're 12 points behind the championship, it's going to be so hard to catch up. And... I think the team they've got is, if they didn't have the minus 12, could easily be getting mid-table. Oh, easy, um, yeah, yeah. But minus 12 points, unluckily for them. They've got some class players, but yeah, for me, Chef Wednesday are going to be finishing bottom and getting relegated. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a fair assumption. That's a fair prediction. Um, I actually haven't gone with Sheffield Wednesday for bottom of the table. Um, I've actually gone with Rotherham. Uh, oh. I personally think Rotherham are really going to struggle. Uh, obviously, nothing against Rotherham, um, but for me personally, I really just don't see where they're going to be picking up points i think they've possibly got the weakest squad in the league um yeah. and i just i just think they're going to struggle picking up points i think they they let in like uh oh no they, i think they scored like 25 set piece goals which is pretty good in, and obviously is is helpful to to winning games if you could score from set pieces it's a good head up for you but i think yeah. in the championship set pieces are still vitally important of course but I think they're going to struggle to get that many goals from it. And where that was most of their, like, um, their goal, or a lot of their goals came from, I think it was like 24, 25. So I think they are going to struggle a little bit. Uh, and I think they will probably finish bottom. So sorry, Rotherham fans. And obviously, sorry, Sheffield Wednesday fans. But yeah. into 23rd, go on. Who have you got to 23rd? I've decided to go for Rotherham in 23rd. They would be bottom, but obviously Sheffield Wednesday's prediction. Um, yeah, I mean, Rotherham, they, they, they brought in a little bit of experience. They brought in Wes Harding from Birmingham um, on a free, I believe. I think it was a free. I don't know whether they bought him. And they brought in Jamal Blackman, um, or Jamal Blackman, however you want to say it, uh, on loan. Um, but they're not really exciting players for the championship. They're kind of just like a yo-yo club. They normally do swap with Barnsley every year. So yeah. shout out to Barnsley for not going down. So <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah, Rotherham, I'm going to say 23rd because exactly how you said, their squad's very thin, very weak. Haven't really brought in too many players that they're going to... I think that's going to boost the squad. I don't know much about Rotherham. Uh, I don't know who they really they've lost, but I know they've bought some type of players because you see it on the feed now and again. But yeah. yeah, Rotherham fans, I think their season's going to be like it normally is in the Championship. Very dull and yeah, go back to League One. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think they're, they're in that tricky, like you say, in a bit of a yo-yo position right now in that they, they can work their way out of League One, but they can't keep themselves in the Championship. So it's a bit of a tricky one. I think they need across a couple of seasons like in a season where they go down if they have some big players that played well like Ajayi for example they need to do their best to try and keep hold of someone or some mm. people to kind of then yeah, when they go West down Brown. yeah when they then go down again when they rebolster the squad to have you know two seasons worth of, of top players and, and that might help them stay up but in 23rd I've gone with Shepherd Wednesday um, like James said the minus 12 points I think is a is a big big knock and minus 12 points in, in the championship is, is tough like we saw obviously how much it affected teams like Wigan last year like they were like a mid-table team minus 12 points see you later like it's uh, it's a really really tight and tough season for them 
Uh, like you said, some great players they brought in. I really do think they've done really well to bring in some of those players. I was quite surprised at some of the players that went there, knowing that it really is a relegation scrap to stay up in the championship, which is always going to be tough. But I think the 12 points is going to be enough to see them down, sadly, for Sheffield Wednesday. Um, so we've both got the same two teams in the bottom two. Uh, but flipped. But go on then. Final teams to get relegated. Who are you going for? Um, final teams to get relegated is going to be Barnsley for me. Okay. Um, simply just because they had a, a, a mediocre season last year. Managed to stay up by somehow beating Brentford. But the people that kind of went through with them, they did end up losing. They lost, uh, I think, was it Brown to Brown Stoke? Team, yeah. Um, and he was probably one of their be better players. Um, I don't really know who else they've really lost. I don't know if they brought in many players. I think they probably. I think they brought in a couple of foreign players. Um, but yeah, I mean their manager is pretty sound. He seems like a nice manager to play under. But nice managers really, so if you don't get you anywhere, if you've watched the Spurs documentary, you'll know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Barzi get relegated. I think just it is how it is normally for them. But they managed to always take six points off us. So but yeah, yeah Barzi so in twenty second. <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, I have gone with not Barnsley, I've gone with a different team. I've gone with Coventry now. Uh, I know that means I've put two of the relegated teams or two of the promoted teams, sorry, in the relegation zone and I just think looking at a lot of their wins, how they won their games last season I don't think it will quite cut it this season. Kind of like when I talk with Brodham getting a lot of goals from set pieces Coventry won, I think they got like 19 or 18 wins and I think they won like three quarters and four fifths of them by a single goal. Now in the championship it's going to be much much tougher to hold on to that lead. As QPR fans we can tell you you can't yeah. sit on one nil. You really can't. Especially um, if you get corners against you. Yeah especially. So I, I just think that there's going to be a, it's going to be a really really close call. I think the teams that I've got in the the two spaces above relegation as well I very easily could have swapped those teams around. I really could have swapped those teams anyway. But I, obviously, I had to make a decision, and I have put Coventry City there, but I do think Coventry City will be very near to staying up. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coventry City stay up, um, but if push came to shove and I had to pick, I have put them down there. I hope that Matt Godden for them can do really well. Um, I think mm. he's a big part in them staying up, realistically. Uh, but I do think it's going to be very close between them uh, and the next two teams above them. So, talking of those teams, James, 20th place, who are you going for? In 21st. 21st. Uh, yes, 21st place. Here you go. <laughs> um, I went for Luton. Mm -hmm. um, just because their season last year, I think, was very good for the Championship. First ever season. Was it the first ever season back in the Championship this decade, whatever so. it was? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think that. I don't even know if they've made any transfers at all. I don't think they um, have. I don't know if they've actually made any signings. I can't. I haven't I remembered seeing so. anyone of, of making signings. But yeah, I think it's going to be uh, all right season for Luton. I think they'll finish 21st. Nothing really to say about them. They're a bit, just a bit there. You know what I mean? They're just kind of there. Mm. I think they, uh, like, like you said, with the teams I've got from 22nd up to 19th slash 18th, I think yeah. any of them teams could be the ones to go. Definitely. Like it's going to be a, it's going to be a dogfight down below, um, which I hope we're not in. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the playoffs. It's going to be something to a bit of a spectacle because this year in the championship the amount of teams that are in it that just people have been saying that this championship season isn't, isn't exciting because you've got like people in like Rotherham, Barnsley, Coventry and that but that's what makes it exciting by the unknown yeah so yeah yeah but yeah For 21st sure. I've gone with Luton what about yourself um well this is actually the first one we agree on I've gone with 21st I've gone with Luton uh literally for the exact same reasons I think Collins uh is going to be important hopefully yeah. Collins can keep them up um obviously Collins is a player that I really like and I really wish we had signed uh, last season I think we both agreed on that one yeah. um, but I, I think I don't know again like you say <laughs> the next couple of teams we talk about could also easily have been any of the teams we've just talked about it, it really is going to be a close one just trying um, to change them really yeah exactly exactly like literally I think if I'd sat here and changed those like five teams like you said 18th to 22nd realistically I would have been happy with how I put them anyway because I think any of those teams could finish in any of those positions so but yeah I agree I think the lack of signings I think it is it Jones is that the manager uh, yeah the I think one was at Stoke he he's to, gone back there now yeah I think he said there's players he definitely wants to fill in I, I think he said that he's looking mainly to fill up like the fullback roles because that's a position they were a bit lacking last season um, and obviously with the way they play their fullbacks are quite important to to getting that ball in there for Collins or for whoever's up especially when you've got Martin Crane um, right back yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I do. I do think they're going to have a bit of a tough season, uh, but I do think they'll just squeak it and just about uh, beat the drop, personally. But uh, yeah. again, going into these teams that we think could just about stay up, twentieth place. Who have you gone for? I've gone with Coventry. 
Okay. Um, I just think the way the, uh, they work, like the philosophies they do, they're bringing through young talent, bringing through uh, a lot of their uh, youth team. Mm-hmm. I feel like, obviously, Matt Godden, he's kind of rose from the lower ranks, obviously, being at Stevenage, watched him play myself. He's a very good striker. I think he got yeah. un- unfortunate injuries at Peterborough, so I didn't work there. But he went to commentary, and it's worked for him at commentary, to be fair, and I hope he does do mm-hmm. well, because he's actually a good signing. And I've, I've spoke, spoke to him and stuff. He's a nice guy. Um but, yeah, I think Coventry will finish 20th. I don't think they're any worse than the other teams. I think they could be a bit of an underdog for mm-hmm. just in general this year. You don't really know with newly promoted sides. So, I think Coventry realistically are going to be... Uh, I don't know. It's just a bit of a hard one. But it might. I don't yeah. know how they're going to feel about playing at Birmingham. I mean, when we go away, hopefully we'll beat them because we like playing at St Andrews. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> I'll go for Coventry that. at 20th. Yeah, no, I, I forgot they're at St Andrews this season. Um, yeah. Or at the moment, or, or for however long. Um, but I, I do agree, by the way, in the fact that they they have got a very unknown team. But I think their philosophy could work in the championship for sure. Um, obviously, I have them going down. But in 20th place for me, I've gone with Wickham Wanderers. Um, out of the three teams, I think they're possibly the most likely to stay up. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of Ainsworth. I love the way he plays. Obviously, I go to Wickham occasionally because they're my local team. Uh, mm-hmm. And I just think they've got the ability to stay up. I really do. Um, I think the players they've brought in have been phenomenal pickups for the positions that they need. Um, I think Horgan's going to be a fantastic signing. I think he's a very experienced yeah, player. And I think he'll bring a lot of it. Sick. Yeah, yeah. Very good player. Um, and, you know, although it's the cup, although it's early on and, you know, you can't finalise the teams, I think they've really put in a good shift against Brentford. Went down to 10 men. I think quite unjustified, but they went down they to 10 a, men. They weren't a red card at all. Yeah, I mean, it was maybe a yellow, but I think realistically they, they did put in a really good shift. And a team that a lot of clubs and a lot of pundits and stuff are expecting to finish right up at the top of the table. And they... You know they gave them a good go, and they they yeah. really I think look good for the good for the ninety minutes. So I think they're just about to stay up. I think Jacobson's going to be massively important for them from set pieces. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how much Adebayo plays uh, and how much game time and how much of an impact he has. But players mm-hmm. like Samuel, players like Offerball, um, if they get him back on loan, they're they're trying to get him back on loan, but I know it's not finalised yet. But Onye Dinma, absolute beast. I think he'll if he doesn't. Um, Where's that guy from? Stay with him. Uh, he's ball. Um, oh, Offerball. Offerball's yeah. from on loan from Bournemouth. So oh, okay. it'll be interesting to see if they try and utilise him. Obviously, different management there and everything. So I don't know if what the likelihood of them getting him back is. But regardless, I, I think people like Oni Dimmer, I think Samuel's going to be a really, really big player for them this season. Um, and I think Stewart's going to prove to be a really, really good player. I was surprised not uh, like more clubs didn't come in for Stewart because um, I think he was probably the best centre-back in League One personally last season. So I've gone with Wickham in 20th. Um, I do think they'll beat the drop. But again, any of these teams really could chop and change from 22nd to 18th. But uh, yeah, 19th place, who you gone uh, I've gone for Wickham. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it feels like enough. we're just rotating you know, like, <laughs> just teams now and again. A so, bit. I mean, we can't <laughs> get much wrong. Um, yeah, I've gone for Wickham 19th. Like you said, I think that the three teams coming up, they've probably got the most quality and the most promise in their team. Yeah. Um, I think the signing of Taza Foley uh, is a good centre-back uh, option for them. I think he's just been a bit rocky with Hull, obviously the situation at Hull as well. So, And yeah. also, um, like you said, Horgan, I think he's going to be a great winger. I think I watched him against Brentford. I think he'd come on yeah. and he got an assist straight away in the second half. So, Or well, no, I think he scored, actually. He um, scored a penalty, what, yeah. Yeah, one of them two. And, uh, and also Jason McCarthy, I think he's mm-hmm. going to be a good signing for them. Yeah, a bit definitely. of experience. Um, and I think they brought in Stockdale on a free. who have that experience as well to help the younger keepers and stuff. But yeah. no, I think we, I think Wicker will have the quality to stay up. It's just whether if they use the squad depth that mm-hmm. they have, because obviously it's a very small club if it comes yeah. to the championship. Was it like 9,000 they fit there? Yeah. Right. Uh, obviously, it right don't matter at the moment because no fans and stuff. But I just watched him pre-season. I wasn't too impressed. Obviously, playing teams like West Ham and that, and they did get yeah. smacked. But that is West Ham. They were playing like Philippe Anderson, Lanzi and stuff. But yeah, I think Wickham. Pre season means nothing, to be completely honest. So no, I think Wickham will stay out. I think they'll finish 19th. They've got they've made some uh, important signings, some free signings that they've managed to make. And all kind of young. I think all under mm-hmm. the age of 30, apart from Stockdale, obviously he's getting on a yeah. bit and dropped quite a lot since he was doing well at uh, Brighton. But yeah, no, I think that Wickham will do all right. I think they'll finish 19th. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously I'm hoping they stay up. Um as a, a local Wickham lad but I, they I would like they are, they are kind of like the second QPR because they take yeah. like all our players yeah they, they have a lot of our youngsters on loan or, or then pick them up like Giles Phillips has gone there now but uh, yeah. in 19th place I've actually gone with Reading um, I think Reading are in for a bit of a dull season in all honesty I think they've lost some big players obviously Ajaria and Swift both gone uh, I think Raphael is a fantastic keeper and I think he definitely had a big part in them staying in the championship and, and doing finishing where they did last season 
uh, and it'll be very, very important for them to keep him less busy. I think they need to have uh, defensively a lot more work done because I seriously, I think with the players that they have lost, if they don't bring in suitable replacements, I do genuinely think they're going to be in trouble uh, and I don't know where their points are going to sort of come from. But yeah. again, I think they'll do enough to stay up. I do think they've got the championship experience in order to stay up. But I do think that they are in a in a in a bit of trouble. I think they're a club that are in in a bit of bit of issue, few issues. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, so yeah, I've gone with them in nineteenth, but eighteenth place. Who are you going for? Uh, I've gone with Reading. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, I decided to go for them just because the kind of players they lost haven't really <clears throat> um, kind of addressed the issues. Obviously, mm-hmm. I think they've the most noticeable one for me really would probably be I think Obeet has left, right, left yeah. back. Um, Charlie Adams gone I think Chris Gunter left as well okay. so that's a big one for them because he's been there for ages like he's been there for time and uh, yeah I think uh, I think Charlie Adams last year was very it was obviously he's a very old player but he's very experienced and you saw how much he made him tick last year especially yeah. when they played against us when he was away and John Swift scored that weldy are you sure he's gone? I don't know if he's actually gone I'm fairly yes. sure he's I think he's gone. on the way out but I don't know if he's actually oh. gone um, well, I'm, I'm- Placing that opinion on he's gone or he's going. Yeah, so. I think he probably is going to be pretty honest. Um, I think they lost Blackett as well to Nottingham Forest as well, yeah. so that's going to be a big loss for them. Um, but the, yeah, like, like you said, the players they brought in has been promising. They obviously they brought in Ajaria from Liverpool. Mm-hmm. I think that's a long time coming. He's been there for like loan for like three seasons before ending up buying him. They obviously brought in uh, Josh Laurent as well from Shrewsbury. That was in the QPR academy. Yeah, uh, he played very good against <clears throat> Liverpool in the cup. Um, I thought he was a good player. Um, but yeah, their, their transfer window hasn't been anything of I think that's literally the two signings I think I can remember they're making but I don't really yeah. think their squad's got anything too just in your face about I think realistically up to Reading they could easily go down as well like it is yeah. in that type of spectrum where all them teams could be going down but yeah I think Reading personally just because the signings they've made they've made two good signings but I haven't really addressed the goal situation I don't think they scored many goals I think Lucas yeah. Jow I think is going to be big for them. I think he plays for them. I, th- I think he's got a hat trick in pre season. I'm pretty yeah, certain. P- is it Pushcast or as well? Pushcast as well. So yeah, they'll yeah. be okay for them. But yeah, I've gone with Reading. Yeah. Well, um, I've gone with a team you put quite a bit lower down, but I've gone with Barnsley. Um, yeah. Again, like we said, up to kind of this point, I think any of the teams that we've mentioned up to now could very easily be in that bottom three. Um, but I, I don't know. I just think they. I think they've got a, a young squad with a lot to prove. And I think as long as they can get that ticking and uh, I'm going to say lack of experience. I know obviously they're going to have experienced heads there. But as, as long as they can get everything going in the right direction, things working for them, I think they've got enough to stay up. I think they're one of the teams that um, have, I'm going to say a bit of depth. I, th- I think the pushing towards that mid-table is, is the, the best I can see them doing. But I think realistically... Yeah. That bottom sort of third, I think, is possibly where I see them coming. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. Um, but I think if, if they can keep hold of, uh, what's his name? Is it Struber? Is that his name? Then I think yeah. he'll do, they'll do well. I think he he's a big part of it. I think they'll still do well without him. But I think if they can keep him, then he'll be a big part of them staying up personally. There's one, there's one they've got from Germany as well, like Fitch Miles. I don't yeah, yeah, remember. Yeah. Like, I think I they got it last year. But yeah, they, they have a lot of like decent foreign players. But yeah, it's a bit of a thin squad, so... Yeah, definitely. Fair um, but go on then. Uh, we're into 17th place. Who do you reckon? I have gone for my beloved Queen's Park Rangers in 17th. Okay. Um, obviously, last year we thought that we were going to finish as high as 12th. Obviously, last season it was an improvement. Um, I've decided to go for 17th this year. Um, you're probably sitting there thinking why. But realistically, I think the players that we've lost, uh, obviously a big one being Ezzy, um, mm-hmm. what he brings to the team, I don't think we're ever going to get in a couple of years personally I think he was just so talented like losing a player of that calibre and that talent like he doesn't even need to put in 100% and he probably could be better than half our players Yeah. Um, obviously losing Grant Hall to Middlesbrough I mean it, it is bad but it's a bit of a kick in the teeth from him so I'm not really sad about him leaving the kind of attitude that he showed the space to QPR after the times of helping him with all these issues and so I had to say nah screw this I know he's doing it for his baby and his family and everything yeah. but realistically sometimes in football you've got to think like it's like Jack Robertson respect. but yeah, a bit of respect. Um, losing Leisner, I think that's a, a bad one as well. Bad call from yeah. the club, just letting him go, but it is what it is. Um, Brangel, Pugh, Hugh Gill, Wells, Samuel if he does leave, Man if he does leave. Obviously, at the moment, they haven't, but I'm just thinking the contributions that the players I'm talking about that, that got to the club, 70-plus goals. Yeah. 
yeah. all of the players and to only really bring in two forwards to support that and to try and balance it against that, I'm really worried. Obviously, only bringing in one striker in Dykes. I think he will be a good striker. I feel like he's going to be a nonsense to play against. We've got, scored on his uh, second full debut for... Or second cap, should I say, for Scotland. I think yeah. um, he'll be a good player for us. But I think, personally, the squad we've got is very thin, very young. And the depth that we have available to us, if we get any injuries, is going to be increasingly worrying. Because seeing the under-23s haven't had a proper run-out in how long. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think, obviously, the players like Dicky, Amos, Thomas, they'll be good. But really, for me, I think that we're just not going to have that great of a season. It's going to be another rebuild process. So, yeah, I'll put, I'll put us down in 17th. Yeah, no, fair enough. And uh, and hey, anyone who thinks this is a, a biased uh, opinion or we're overhyping QPR specifically, I don't think we've, uh, James would put himself in 17th if, uh, if that's the case. So hopefully that shows signs of a genuine thought process going into it. I can tell you I haven't put QPR in 17th. A team I have put in 17th, uh, and I think it will cause a bit of controversy, is Middlesbrough. Um, I honestly, I don't think they're going to have a relegation battle. I think they'll have enough points to definitely stay up. But obviously last season was a bit of a tricky season for them. I think they're looking better for it for sure. Um, but realistically, I think I think Piers is going to be huge to them. I think he's a, he's their young keeper. I think he's definitely a player to watch. I think he's going to be really, really good. Uh, but I just, I don't know. I love Warnock. I absolutely love Warnock. And Warnock for me does that thing where he picks up a team that you go... They're not looking that good. And all of a sudden, he just gets them ticking in the championship. He knows what to do. He's managed, what, like 1,200 games or something in the championship. Yeah, but for me personally, to. I just... I don't know. I just don't see it. Like, it could be me just looking past something. But I feel like a lot of people are going to have Middlesbrough a lot higher at the table. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's quite going to tick for them. Uh, and personally, I think they are going to have a bit of a stinker season. So I've gone with them in 17th. Controversial... Uh, please don't hate me, is all I ask. <laughs> um, but yeah, go on then. 16th place, who are you going for? Uh, 16th, I put Huddlesfield. Okay. Um, mainly just because they're, at the moment, they've still kept hold of Grant, I believe. I don't know if he's, mm -hmm. I can't remember if he's left, but anything. But I don't know if they've made any signings at all. Like, I can't remember if they've made anything. Um, I think they brought in Nabi Saar from Chelton on a free, I remember, and Danny Ward from Cardiff. That's it, them two yeah. players. But apart from that, their team hasn't really been boosted. I think last year they struggled. I don't think people expected them to struggle as much as they did. Um, losing players like Katrunga and Munier, that might hurt them at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I just don't think that they're going to have that much of an exciting season. So I decided to put Huddersfield in the 16th, really. Yeah, no, and, and that's fair enough. Um, I've gone with uh, Bristol City. Uh, I think they're going to have a bit of a tricky interim like season. I think this is going to be a bit of a... Again, I don't think they've had too much in the way of, of transfers going on, ins and outs particularly. Uh, I think they've got some great players, but I think there's definite positions in the squad that are a little bit lacking. So um, yeah. I think that they're going to be, again, comfortable. Uh, but I think, again, this is going to be a season that's that's going to be a bit of a fr frustrating one for, for Bristol City, especially given all of the, like, the hype and potential that a lot of teams thought, a lot of people thought they were going to have last season and they're not quite hitting those heights. So... I think it's going to be a bit of a weird season for Bristol City, a bit of an interim, a bit of a rebuild to then kind of next season go and, and try and push up again. But uh, yeah, I've gone with Bristol City in 16th. Um, but 15th, we're getting near that middle part of the table now. Who are you we going are. for? I've gone for Birmingham. Okay. Um, I feel like their season this year is going to be a lot better than last year. I feel they've really boosted their squad with some of the signings, such as Leco. I think that's a good pickup for how much yeah. they got him for. Um, George Friend, Jan Torrell, they've got back. Uh, I think George Friend will bring that experience that they need at the back. Sure. Uh, with the loss of Wes Harden as well. Obviously, a big loss in Bellingham with them. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that is how the the world works, to be honest. Uh, I think they've brought in Clayton. I think he's going to be an OK signing for them. He's a bit of a dirty, dirty player. but And obviously brought in Neil Etheridge as well. So I think that's going to be a good replacement for their keeper. Um, okay. Obviously, they are, they are. I think they are playing right now while we record this. So right. we don't know how they're doing. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just think Birmingham are going to have an alright season. I think some of the signings they've made have actually been quite good. So, for Championship experience, I think they have gone the right way about it. Uh, I don't, I can't remember who their manager is now. I, I took uh, Karanka, Karanka. That's it. So, yeah. yeah, I think he'll do right for them. If I could do even better, to be completely honest. Like, anyone in these sides we're naming mid-table. Normally, there is one in there, that, or two in there, dark horses for playoffs. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've gone for Birmingham. Uh, I've 15th. also gone for Birmingham in 15th. Um, okay. I wholeheartedly agree with what you said. I think Karanka will definitely bring improvements. 
Um, I think a lot of Birmingham fans, I've spoken to some Birmingham fans that are saying they think they're going to fight for playoffs. And big ups to you. If you do that, fair play. Um, but realistically, I think Karanka's first season needs to be concentrated on re-stabilising the club. Having a player like Bellingham go for such big money, and I think they did really well to get the amount of money they got for him. Um, having him go for that amount is, you know, really, really good for the club. It brings a lot of money in, and I think, honestly, they're probably better off for it. As much as Bellingham was a fantastic player for them, and obviously all of this hype around him, etc., etc., I think, realistically, them having that amount of money to boost the whole squad, like you said, defensively, I think it's a big, big part they need to bolster. I think that will help them go in the right direction. So I think, again, mid-table, like we said, with the bottom like bunch, there's those numbers could easily swap around. Just like the middle of the table, those numbers could easily swap around. And Birmingham could be a team that push on for more, but I think 15th is probably a fairly accurate representation of where I think they will finish personally. Um, but 14th place, who are you going for? This, this, this may be very controversial, to be completely honest, but I've gone for Bournemouth. Okay. Um, mainly just because the players they've lost. Mm -hmm. Such as in Ake, Fraser, Wilson, Ramsdale, um, Charlie Daniels, Francis, Ibe. I think they lost Sermon as well. So like, all them players they've lost from their first team, even last year. And they've brought no one. Yeah. They've not brought a single player. And when you think of the championship, the way how much harder it is. I think to get out of the championship is harder than trying to stay up in the Prem sometimes. Depends how the way you're built. Um, yeah. But Bournemouth, as a small club as it is, they have not really invested about the 85 million they've got. Um, even David Brooks could be leaving for them as well. Mm -hmm. So that could mm -hmm. be a big loss for them. But I look at their squad and I think that it's just not great at the moment. They, they, this will probably change because they probably will invest before or after the first game. They probably want to see how it goes. But sacking Eddie Howe as well, yeah. or he just left and he's been there from like Mr. Bournemouth for how long? Um, yeah, they just haven't really done anything. And when you think you can't have from the Prem, you need to act as a, as a club. They haven't. So I've gone with Bournemouth in 14th, really. That's quite controversial, but it is how I feel about it, to be completely honest. Well, you say controversial. I think a lot of people are in a similar opinion to you. I think there's a lot of people that really think they're going to be quite low down. So um, I haven't got them in 14th. I've gone with Blackburn. Um, I think also slightly controversial. I think some people are, you know, I think Mowbray's slowly starting to, you know, get progression there. And I think they've got players that can carry on. Armstrong started, um, sorry, finished last season pretty well. If he can start off anywhere near that, then I think they've got a good um, good thing going for them. Obviously, Dak's yeah. still there. I'm kind of surprised Dak's still there because <laughs> there's been so many times he's been linked away. Um, but I would say, again, honestly, I think they've got a chance to push up higher. Um, but realistically, I think that they will be um, that mid-table, and I think it will be a, a good season for them. I think they're going to score a lot of goals, but for me, it's the worry would be, again, conceding. I think they're a team that look really good going forward and not quite as impressive defensively. Backwards, so, uh, yeah, yeah I, I've gone with a Blackburn in 14th. Very um, nice. 13th place. You know, now I've gone for the... Blackburn. You've gone with Blackburn. There we go. There yeah. we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, like you were just about to say, we're in the mid mid table. I, yeah. Apologies yeah. about cutting you off. No, not at all. Um, not at all. But yeah, I'll carry on. Thirteenth um, place. I've gone for Blackburn. Like you said, I think some of the players they kept are going to be vital for him. Armstrong scores a lot of goals. Dak is very creative. I think they still got Sam Gallagher. Is he still there? Uh, I think so. Um, yeah, so he scores quite a few goals. They haven't really lost any. I think they lost Danny Graham, but really, is that is that bad? Yeah, it's not. I think he went to Sunderland. Lost. I think so that's not a bad sign for them in League One, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've lost um, Adi Rabio, I think, from City on loan. I think he's gone back now, so they haven't really made many signings. But I think the players they managed to keep will keep them up comfortably. I think they'll have a decent season. They are kind of like getting their... Like, if they actually invest, I think they could easily push for the playoffs and even get promoted. I think they just need to... That final kick, uh, that, that just maybe two or three players for the actual quality to properly bolster the whole squad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that Blackburn will have a good season. I'll put them... In thirteenth place, right in the middle. Um, but like we say, any of these mid-table teams could have a bit of a bit of a season where they just absolutely go out for it. So, yeah, yeah, I've gone for thirteenth place for Blackburn. Uh, definitely. Uh, well, the team I've got to finish off the bottom half of the table is Huddersfield. Um, I've got them a little bit higher than I think you put them. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think I don't know. I think what's this? Um, what's, oh my God, Cor Corbran. Coburn, I don't know how you say his name, but the guy who was working under Bielsa, who's gone there, um, I think if he can start to implement any kind of similarities in, in regards to play style, and uh, obviously that takes time. You can't just have a team like yeah. click overnight. It takes time to like implement new things. But uh, something that Huddersfield were fairly infamous for was starting games off at like zero 
speed. Like they would just not start games well at all. And I think if they can get that sort of fixed and start games with a bit of oomph and a bit of kick about them, then I think they'll be looking much, much better. And I think a mid-table finish for them will be very realistic, but very achievable. Um, Grant, if he can keep scoring for them, then great. Um, but, you know, they, I think they need to rely less on him and ha hope for more input from other players as well. A bit more coming from, you know, from midfielders and, and whatever. But I, I do think that they'll have an OK season. Um, and like James said, any of these teams could be higher than we predict, lower than we predict. That mid-table is always a tricky one to call, in my opinion. But um, I've gone with them in 13th place to finish off the bottom half of the table. But to start the second half, the top half of the table, who you got in 12th? I'll put Bristol City. Okay. Um I think some of the players I got in January were good. Obviously, Naki Wells, and I think yeah. they've bolstered their squad. I think some some of their signings have been actually very good for the championship. Um, bringing in quite a few decent names. They brought in Chris Brunt. I think that would be a good experience for them. Obviously, he's not the progress, most mobile player anymore, but obviously he was in the, captain in the squad that got uh, West Brom promoted last year. He didn't mm -hmm. play as many games, like you said, like we said about Cameron. Um, but he was kind of that figure in the club. Um they signed Chris Martin on a free from Derby as well. Old fat boy up front. I think he'll score quite a bit, score quite a few goals for them. Um, one player that they brought in that I didn't even realise about a very good sign is Joe Williams from Wigan. That is a superb signing. Mm -hmm. He's actually one of their best players last year and I think he's a very good championship player. Still quite young as well. Um, Alfie Mawson on loan as well. Um, that would be a good signing for them. And they also got Stephen Sestring on loan from Fulham. So they have actually signed some decent players. Um, which I think will strengthen their squad from last year. I think they will have a decent campaign. I think they even could do better than that. But, yeah, I think they're going to have a good uh, good campaign. They did lose Schmodix, I think. I think they sold him. Yeah. Um, he was supposed to be a big upcoming talent, but just doesn't really click for him. Um, he just doesn't really do it. But, yeah, they've got quite a few players. I think Nagy, I think, is a player they've got as well. He looks quite good. Adam Nagy, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think that down at Ashton Gate, they'll have a decent season. I'm quite a fan of Bristol. I'm not a fan of Bristol because I took the Wales, but I think they're a good side, and I think the way they run is very good. Nah, fair enough. And, and I, like I said, um, obviously I had them a bit lower down, but they, they've got okay players. I just For me, I just didn't see things quite clicking. But you, you list off some of those names, I think, yeah, maybe I've, maybe I've overlooked that a little bit. But in 12th place, started off the top half of the table. I'm optimistic, but I'm going with QPR. I, I'm backing the boys to get a similar finish to last season. Um, like James said, obviously we've lost just the sheer talent of Iberia Eze. Like, that's a big, big loss to us. It, it really, really is. And we have lost other players. I think Tony going, again, absolutely sucks. I would have liked to have kept him even just as an option. Um, the Grant situation, he's marked his car for me, and I've lost a lot of respect for him personally. But I think, realistically, the players we have brought in, I think, are positive pickups. I think they're positive signings. I hope and hope and hope. And this kind of task prediction is based on the fact that Warburton isn't done in the transfer window. Hopefully, we have a bit more to do. Uh, I think, like James said, another striker is a minimum. Another attacking option um, from the midfield. At least another defender or two minimum. Um, and I would like to see us keep hold of Lumley. If Lumley goes and for some god-awful reason we decide to put Kelly in go over game, I would massively knock our positions down quite a few places. Um, oh, just, but, I'll drive him to another club. <laughs> but re realistically and honestly, I do genuinely think we're just going to have a okay season. And I think maybe I'm being a, a bit over ambitious saying 12th, but I, I back it. I'm hoping 12th is something that we can achieve. And I promise you I wouldn't put us there if I genuinely didn't think we had it in us. So 12th place yeah. is QPR for me. 11th place, who you gone for? Uh, 11th, I've gone for Millwall. Okay. Um, I think their season last year was very good because last year I did actually put them bottom. So sorry, Millwall fans. That. <laughs> that was probably one of my worst predictions ever. Um, but no, I think Millwall going to have a decent season. They brought in Troy Parrott and Ryan Woods. Um, I think Mason Bennett's joined them as well, and uh, Scott Malone. So um, yeah, they're four decent signs that will improve their team. I feel they've got quite a good team. They obviously, I think they lost Gregory last year. That's a bit of a bad one. But they brought mm. in. Um, I think they lost O'Brien as well. I think he's gone to Sunderland as well. So that might Sunderland, be a bit. Yeah. Might be a bit uh, of a, a tipsy turvy one, but no, they've got a decent squad. I think they've bolstered up some certain options. Obviously, Troy Power on loan. Everyone's saying it's going to be some next big thing. Um, so yeah, we'll see how he does in the championship. Could get quite a lot of goals. It really depends how Mill will play around him. Obviously, they've got Matt Smith as well, so we can play off him as well. Um, Ryan Woods going in quite. He was supposed to be a big thing at Brentford. Obviously, went to Stoke. Didn't really work for him. But I think it's only a loan, so I think it, uh, that would be okay for him. But no, I think Mill will going to have a decent season. I think they'll finish around eleventh. Um, they've kind of been pushing their borders of playoffs for like two years now. 
So if they can really go that next step under Rauer, I think Rauer is a good manager with, if he gets the right squad. Obviously, at Derby, I don't think it really worked for at Burnham. Obviously, mm. he would, he would like getting toward promotion. They sacked him because apparently that was what the board wanted, which realistically doesn't sit with me at all. I don't yeah. get that. But, no, yeah, I think Mill will have a decent season. I think they'll finish 11th. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, for me, I've gone with Swansea. I think they're going to have a bit of a drop-off from last season. Uh, they've lost a lot of their big, big names and a lot of their um, sort of core from the last season. I think that really will cause issues for them personally. I think they've got some good good loan signings in, for sure. Um, but for me, I just don't know if it's going to gel. And again, I think it's going to be a bit of a weird season for them. I don't think they'll do as well as last season. I think they'll do okay, but I don't think they're going to do quite as well as last season. So I've got them in uh, 11th place. Well, we are in 11th. Yeah, we're in 11th place. Got them in 11th place. Um, and I think, again, they could finish higher than that because they did have a very good season last season. Um, and, yeah, it is, it is what it is. That's where I've got them. But 10th uh, place, who are you going for? Um, I've started to go for Preston. Okay. Mainly on the fact that they normally do have a decent campaign every year. Um, they mm -hmm. seem to push for playoffs until about, I'd say, seven to six games normally do bottle it. I think it'll probably be the same again. I think they finished 10th, comfortably 10th. Um, yeah, I think their squad is just very good. I think the way they've built it under Alex Neil, I think it's been decent. Um, still, I think Josh Harrop's still there, I believe. He's a very yeah. good sign, a very good not signing, but a good player for them. Um, Jaden Stockley. Yeah, I think their squad's very well balanced. I think they have a, a decent team to try and push for it. But obviously, I think just the stature of the club really doesn't belong in the Prem. Sorry to Preston fans, but I think if you're up to the Prem, you'd get absolutely slaughtered. But I think you're a good Championship side. So I think I think they'll finish tenth. I think they'll be okay. Yeah, I I'm the same. I've got Preston in tenth as well. Um, I think for them, uh, at the latter end of latter stages of the season is what I tried to say um, I think like you say they lost their push for the playoffs the late goals that killed them off and chances for them uh, right at the end of games and they kind of just seemed to get to like that 80th minute and then just things just wouldn't work for them like things just wouldn't click uh, but I think with, with a, a good like main striker to really pick up those goals and have a, you know like a main man who's going to get you sort of 15 or so goals a season then I think they're looking at, at Maybe even pushing higher, maybe pushing for the playoffs. But I think with the current squad, with how they're sat, uh, like you say, I think they are a very good championship side. Uh, I think 10th place is a good, respectable finish for them. Uh, and with the current squad as it sits, I think that's where they're going to finish. Um, but 9th place, who are you backing? Uh, I've gone for Swansea in 9th. Okay. I just feel that this season, this year, will be either do or die for them personally mm -hmm. with the players they've obviously seen go I think Selena left which is going to be a big miss for them I think he's yeah. a good player um, losing I think Van der Horn as well at the back I think he was their captain last year so obviously he's gone um, but some of the players they brought in have been very positive they brought in Jamal Lowe from Wigan I think he's a yeah. steal for the amount of I think they got for 800,000 800, which is 000. amazing crazy um, so yeah that would be a very good signing for them uh, bringing in Corey Smith from Bristol City I think that's a good pl player they brought in uh, good experience uh, was their club captain as well, I think. So bringing in them kind of players that we brought in one season was bringing in most captains. Yeah. Um, so obviously, Freddie Woodman on loan and Morgan Gibbs White as well. I think that's going to be a great signing for them. I think he's mm. going to really flourish in the championship, get the experience that he needs to try and challenge into that wall centre midfield. Um, but yeah, I think they're they're going to have a decent season. I think they've brought in players to replace the players they've lost, even though I don't think they've lost too many. So I think their squad. Obviously, getting getting the playoffs last year was weird because they were a team that you wouldn't even think about getting the playoffs because Rears yeah, sure. was a bit like, you didn't really notice them. And mm -hmm. considering we smacked them 5-1 in the cup, um, yeah, I think that they'll have an all-right season. I think they'll finish around there. Yeah, well, we've got we've got them in fairly similar spots, um, so we're clearly we know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, but absolutely. I've gone with... Um, yeah, perfection, mate. I've gone with Bournemouth in ninth. Um... I also agree that they're not going to have a great, great season. They've lost a lot of players. They've brought in no players. Uh, obviously, losing Eddie Howe, losing the experience that he provides. Obviously, that the it's Eddie Howe's second who's come in to the management, who has never been a manager. So this is his first managerial experience, being the main man, being the head guy. Um, you know, and they've lost they've lost so much experience. I think I saw a stat somewhere. It's like like eleven hundred games worth of players like you know appearances of Bournemouth players they've lost that's so hurt. that's that's crazy stuff so that's a lot of experience gone I think they have a bit of an aging squad I don't know what their youth system's like I don't know enough about their young players coming through or whatever to say 
this person, this person, this person, that I'd be just plucking facts out of the air for you. So mm. I'll be honest and say that I think the players that I know of are a slightly aging squad, and that does worry me. If I was a Bournemouth fan, I think I would be slightly worried. I I think they're going to do a bit of a Huddersfield when they came down. I think they're going to have a bit of a stinker season. Um, so I, I I worry for Bournemouth a little bit. I think a ninth place finish is achievable and would be a very good season for them. I think if they can stay in that top half of the table, bearing in mind the players they've lost, ignoring anyone potentially coming in, because obviously at the moment they haven't got anyone coming in. So I think ninth place is achievable, but would also be a very, very impressive finish from that Bournemouth side. Um, yeah. But going into the top eight, who have you got in eighth place? Uh, eighth place, I've got Middlesbrough. Okay. Um, bit of a, a weird shout, but I just think personally, the squad that Warnock can work with, I think if a, a dream of wonders would be around eighth place for um, for Middlesbrough. I think the players they brought in have been okay. Obviously, they brought in Hall. Um, mm. They brought in Morsey from Wigan. I think he's a good signing for them. I think he was probably one of their standout players. I feel sorry for Wigan because they're not in the championship anymore, but the players yeah, they've lost is going to hurt them so everyone, bad. Um, getting Marcus Brown back from uh, Oxford on loan, I think that'll be... Hopefully he can maybe try and flourish in the championship. I think he's a good player if he's given the time to respond to the championship. Um, I think they've brought Bettinelli on, Bettinelli on loan um, as well. They've lost They've lost quite a few players. They've lost uh, Ryan Schott on, on loan. Uh, lost Ayala. I think he left in the end, so that would be quite a big miss for him. I don't really know what the centre back... Uh, is like any more. Obviously, they've got a hole, so sorry, Millsborough fans, for that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think they'll have a decent season under Warnock. I know they lost last night to Watford, like we said, we've, we're recording this after that game, but Watford are probably one of the strongest outfits yeah. um, in the league, without a doubt. So yeah, I think Millsborough have a decent season. Hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, but Warnock might work his magic. We'll have to see. Uh, but I decided to put him up there just from the fact of Warnock's experience as the manager and what he does in the championship with a fairly average side. I think what we done at Cardiff, it wasn't an overly like, I think he took over and they were like, or oh, at one point they just wasn't doing great and he done yeah. the miracle with him. So, yeah, I think that Middlesbrough have a decent season. No, fair enough. I mean, I you picked a team that I put relatively low down. I'm going with the team that you've got a bit low down. I've got Millwall up in uh, eighth place. I think they're going to have another fairly good season. Um, I don't think they'll quite hit that playoffs again. Um, so I think they're just going to miss out for the second time. Uh, but I think they've got a real good spine of players. You know, they've got a good keeper in. Uh, Para, I think, is a fantastic um, sign in, in there on a, on a season loan. I think he'll really help Wallace out a lot. I know that we yeah. were linked with Para um, for a short period of time, um, and I was very happy with that. I thought he would have been a really good uh, player to bring in Especially and the top uh, we'll get some goals. Well. Yeah, that. definitely, definitely, definitely. I thought we had a really good chance of him. But regardless, he did end up going to Millwall, and I think he'll help Wallace in, uh, you know, picking up some goals and. You know, I, I just see them doing well, but not quite well enough to get into the uh, the top six, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, yeah. seventh place, who do you think is just going to miss out? I think Derby. I think mm-hmm. they finished seventh. In fine tradition, Derby bottling playoffs. Um, <laughs> simply just because, obviously, they've got Wayne Rooney, and you can't even, like, when Wayne Rooney went there, what were they, like, 19th, not even getting yeah. a point a game, and he went there, and they, they just turned around dramatically. Um, have done quite... Uh, well, um, obviously, when I did that prediction, I didn't remember kind of the players they've lost. Obviously, they've lost Jaden Bogle and Max Lowe. I think that'll be two yeah. big losses for them going to Sheffield United. So it depends how they're gonna uh, replace them. And they've lost. So I think they've lost Malone and Bennett, like I said, to Millwall. So that's gonna be two players that they just don't, won't have lingering around anymore. Um, but. Yeah, they haven't really brought anyone in. I think they brought in Byrne from Wigan, which is another player that Wigan's lost. We're, we're literally Wigan fans. If you're watching this. We're literally listing your squad that's gone. Yeah. So we do apologise about this. <laughs> Actually, it's not. It's not Tom. It's me. Um, it so Wigan James fans. Knows more. Yeah. Um, I think, the, but the players they've got coming through: Max Bird, Louis Sibley. I think they're very good midfielders. I believe the midfielders. Uh, got Wayne Rooney will work with, and I think that's why they've dramatically improved because he just is that type of person. Um, Striker wise, I, th- I think they still got Waghorn. I think he's a good player yeah. for the championship and. The back line, I think, got Matt Clark. I had, I had him on loan, I think. Depends if they're getting back or not. It depends. Um, but no, I think their squad is suitable enough. Oh, they, I remember they actually got David Marshall from Wigan as well. So, um, <laughs> Wigan fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think they'll finish that off. I think they'll miss out just like they do every year. Uh, well, we're in agreement because I've got Derby in seventh as well. Uh, I think attacking wise, they're looking good. Like you say, you can't knock the Rooney factor because Rooney uh, really did just do absolute wonders at that that team and he really just kind of just got things clicking got things in gear and he's a player that you can't overlook but 
I think they are going to miss out. I think they're going to be. It's going to be close. The teams I've got just above them, I think we'll we'll just about make it in. And they're I think personally slightly dark horses for the season. But I've got with uh, I've gone with Derby in seventh. And uh, yeah, we're we're in agreement. So again, it's definitely going to happen. Derby are in seventh place. Unlucky, it's confirmed. Um, <laughs> but first team, we're into the playoffs now. Who are you backing to just squeak into the playoffs? I've gone with Norwich. Okay. And I know Norwich probably are one of the strongest outfits in the league, but I feel with the amount of players they brought in, or the the kind of players they brought in at the current time, will take a bit of a bedding. It will take quite a while. And obviously the players they've lost, uh, such as Jamal Lewis, I think that's going to be a big loss for them. Um, probably one of their better players in defence. I think they still got Max Aaron's, but I think he probably will leave at one point. If he doesn't leave, then fair enough. Yeah. Um, but time the players, Todd Cantwell still there. He might leave eventually. I don't know how they're... I don't really follow Norwich because who wants to follow Norwich? Um, <laughs> but they brought in Jordan Hugill. Uh, I think he will score goals. I don't yep. think you can really call him a proven championship goal scorer like they're saying because his best season One was season. 15. I'm not sorry, yeah. but... Well, I'm not sorry at all, actually, because I didn't actually want him back, to be quite honest. I'd rather us get a striker that's younger and probably as good. Uh, and they put in Bally Mumba from Sunderland. Good signing, mm -hmm. 18-year-old for the under 23 team. Um, played in the... Checker Trey Trophy, I think it was, a day after a passing exam. So, well done to you. That was ages ago. But <laughs> I, I remember that. So I watched. Yeah. Uh, brought in Ben Gibson on loan. I think that's a good signing uh, from Burnley. Oliver Skip um, be a good player for them as well. I think he'll probably get that experience that he needs to push on to get into the Tottenham team. Um, Kieran Dow as well, championship proven player. I think yeah. that he'll do well for them with feeding Pookie and Hugh Gill. Brindy, I think they still got. So, they have got a very good squad. I think it might take a while to kind of sink all the players in together but like I said sixth to top first from now this could go in any order because I think these teams yeah. have got so much quality I think they're a bit in my opinion from sixth to top they are that step above everyone else just because of the players they have and probably the money they've got as well to be honest so yeah I've decided to stick Norwich in sixth yeah fair enough I've also just looked at it I think we have got the same top six I'm fairly sure because I don't think we've mentioned any of the teams, teams I've got on my top so six. Quite, so quite mental, this. Yeah, we've, we've actually been really close for a lot of these teams. A few teams are a little bit different, but uh, I've got Stoke in sixth. Now, I think Stoke looked very, very good. If you yeah. compare where they were at last season, the start of last season, the the progression level is mad. Like, O'Neill has got them playing some great football. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I think there was a, a thing that was like mathematically, if you took his points tally and average it across their season, they'd have finished in the playoffs, which obviously... You, just you can't crazy. do that, which is, that's mad. Like, you look at that and it's, it's crazy stuff. But I think Powell is going to be fantastic for them. I think Tyrese Campbell uh, will possibly have his season now to potentially step up uh, and, and become the player that a lot of um, Stoke players are the hyping player up to be. That Seb says he is. Yep, Seb and Cal, I hope for your sake they do well uh, and Tyrese is a part of it. But I do genuinely think Stoke are looking to be a good outlet. I think they've uh, kept some good players. Um, Butland is still there, uh, a very hit or miss keeper over the last five or so years. But I think realistically, if he can uh, just regain some form of form, then uh, he could be a good uh, big player to keep hold of. So I think realistically, Stoke are looking like a good squad. I think a top six is very, very feasible for them. Um, but I do have them just about squeezing into it. So I've got them in sixth place. Fifth place, who are you going for? Um, in fifth, I've gone for Cardiff. Okay. Um, I think they had a good season last season. Um, I don't, I don't really know how, but they did. I think Neil Harris, <laughs> Neil Harris did do bits for them. I think when he took over, they were what down like the relegation. Relegations, yeah. And then obviously he, obviously he took them over and done very well with them. Um, yeah, a lot of the Cardiff fans were saying that it's a step back because the philosophy is playing at Millwall, and obviously the way Millwall play, that is how you do it. But no, Neil Harris is a very honest manager. And I like the interviews he said. I think they lost a game in pre-season or something, and. They asked him questions and he said, I don't want to ask the questions. I want to just speak about the team and how I thought we played. And he just basically went into town spoke. on the players yeah. and yeah, spoke yeah. from his heart and was saying that we were crap, basically. Um, but yeah, I think Cardiff will do all right. I think they've got some players that will help them push towards the playoffs. Um, so yeah, I've gone Cardiff in fifth place, to be honest. Ah, fair enough. Um, I've gone with uh, QPR's first game opponents. I've gone with Nottingham Forest. I think they've got a very good team. I think... So we're filming this, obviously, after I film my pre-match interview. Oh, interview? Pretty much preview, I should say. Um, and obviously, I went a bit more in-depth as to every single team. And when I compared Forest team to other teams, I realised how strong that squad is. They have got a lot of very good players. Um, and a lot of experience mixed with just very good talent as well. 
So I think they're definitely going to make it into that top five. I think players like Lolly will be important for them. Yeah. Uh, I think their attacking outlet is... It's, I don't know. Scary. I'm not going to knock Graben because Graben often does well against us. But I feel like they've got options and it's just they need to work out what their main option is because they've got three at least fantastic striking options, let alone like attacking midfielders, just strikers, yeah, that I think good. really could do well. So uh, I've gone with them in fifth. I think they will make it into the playoffs. Uh, and yeah, I think they're a team definitely to watch this season. I think they're going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, fourth place, who you got? I've gone for Forest in fourth place. I okay. just think the outlet they are they have built over the past couple of seasons, with the money they've been given, uh, they given what's their manager called Lamagu Lam Lamamu what Lama, name is it called Lam Lama Laminate um, <laughs> yeah Lamination. Um, they've brought in some good players for the for the championship. The players they've really got, I think a lot of the players they've been getting on loan from like Benfica and whatever they've ended up securing them. I think they're actual good players. If they mm -hmm. push the Premier League, I think they could do a job. Um, obviously, they brought in. Uh, a young centre back from PSG. I don't know how to say his name. It's like Louis Sabo or Mo or something yeah. like that. He's a good player. They brought in there. I think it's like five million pounds. So you know they spent quite a lot there. Spending money. Yeah. Um, loaned in Freeman. I think they'll be a good player for them. Obviously, mm -hmm. I hope he does rubbish today. I hope he breaks his legs. Um, <laughs> nah, jokes. Um, they brought in Lyle Taylor. I think he'd be a good player for them. Uh, obviously, yep. his attitude sometimes isn't there, but as a player, he is there like he's a very good player jack cole back on a free uh black on a free so the good players that will shore up their team for this season going into it um yeah so i think they will finish fourth they haven't lost to, obviously they lost matty cash and yeah. i think that'll be a big loss for him but i think realistically they have time they have replaced them uh them players and uh brought in players they needed so yeah i think not them first will be finishing fourth yeah no fair enough well we've sorted our fourth and fifth because i've gone with cardiff um, in fourth place. I think they're going to have a good season. I think it's going to be an ugly looking season for them. Last season they were like the lowest possession team. They scored like a lot of set pieces and I yeah. think I think it will be, um, I saw a thing online uh, talking about their team. It was like it won't be pretty but it'll be pretty effective and I think that nails it. I think it's, it's going to be scrappy. Yeah, but they're going to get the points and I, I seriously think they're going to have a good season. I think realistically they are going to be uh, a team that a lot of clubs will look at and go Hmm, they'll do all right, but I think they've got the the right players for the play style that they will probably try and implement. So, I think, I think he's a, a good team, a, a good team to look out for. I think it's the more mentality that Harris brings. Yeah. When you speak about yeah, managers yeah. these days, you don't really get people that will kind of criticize their team in an interview, mm -hmm. and I think he might bring that into the dressing room and actually put like have a really strong mental game within the team. Like the team can appreciate the mistakes they may build on from it and actually drive i think you don't get many teams these days that really do go for results rather than playing a nice gritty football so i think yeah. sometimes that's what qpr do too much where we're too nice of a team and we play possession football and then we don't get nice the results stuff. yeah like as a fan i couldn't give i don't care how nice you are like hit them get like, the results play get the results like yeah. you know what i mean like time waste and stuff so um yeah so fair enough yeah i'll go with that but uh we're now into the top three so who is just, in your opinion, going to miss out on automatic promotion? I have gone for Brentford in third. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've gone for Brentford in third. I think the losses that they're going to probably lose inside Ben Rama and Watkins are going to be massive for them. Two players that really did make them tick last year. You can't even go against it. Ben Rama was probably one of the best players alongside Ezzy yep. last year. Um, Karen Phillips is below them. Um, yeah, I think just, just Ben. That in there. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> in there. Yeah. Uh, but Ben Rama is, I think he's an incredible talent. I think if he goes to the Premier League, he deserves it. Yeah. Uh, I hope he just doesn't go to a side where realistically he won't be able to perform. Um, because realistically, when some players do go to them kind of teams like relegation, they end up back in the Championship and their career kind of goes as a standstill. Yeah. Um, so it comes to mind is Leroy Fur, but we'll leave that. Um, <laughs> Ivan, I think they brought in Ivan Tony. I think that's going to be a good yeah. signing for them. Five million up front, five million add-ons in the end. Um, I think that's going to be a superb signing like they normally do. They replace their players for players that can do the same. Um, he had to prove himself in a championship, but neither did Watkins and all this lot, so they do manage to do it. Bringing Charlie Good, I mean, that was a bit unexpected because we were the highly linked for him for ages. Yep. Uh, and then Brentford has come in and got him. Um, obviously, Brentford like nicking QPR signings um, because Brentford are QPR Vision 2. Um, but yeah, no, I think they have brought in two good signings and they kept most of their players that they need to. The thing is with Brentford, they've got that mix where they've got the young experience that they've embedded in the team that works. 
Mm. They've got the philosophy of bringing through academy players and young players and players they buy for almost nothing and selling them on for so much money. And the progression is mad. So it wouldn't surprise me if you see them maybe like push for a top spot this year. But it depends how arrogant they get because they, their squad got very arrogant towards that season and their fans, like I hate Brentford fans, I'm sorry, but the way they speak about like they deserve to go up, deserve to be in the Prem. No one deserves anything, you've got to work for it. So Yeah, yeah no, I think Brentford I hear that. third. I hear that, and I've got Brentford in third as well. I do think they're just going to miss out. Um, I think they're going to have a very good season, for sure. Like you say, Watkins is, is a big miss, but if they can get Ivan Tony working, then great. If they can get Ivan Tony working throughout a season, because at Peterborough, he scored a lot of goals, but it was a lot in the first half of the season, then it was a bit quieter the second half. There were some yeah. teams that really did know how to keep him quiet. Um, namely, like again, you look at Wickham Wanderers, how they played. They kept Ivan Tony to very few chances. Um, but I, I do think, again, like you say, they've got fantastic players. I think if they keep their headspace, I like, personally, I do like Thomas Frank. Again, like you say, I think a lot of the players and stuff got a little bit arrogant towards the end of the season. And mm-hmm. I think that shot them in the foot. So if they can keep, um, you know, keep that on, on the down low, keep, you know, a level head, keep calm and just be, you know, just concentrate on playing football, concentrate on, on playing to their lane. game style. Yeah, exactly. Stay in your lane, do your thing. Then they could easily push for a top two. They really, really could. Uh, I think they could easily push for that second place. The team I've got in second, I think, could potentially swap with them very easily. But I think, realistically, they are are set in for a good season. But if they we see similar tra- uh, traits that we saw in the latter stages of this season, then I think they will miss out on automatics and they'll finish in third place. But, I mean, anyone that predicts them to be outside of the playoffs, I think, is is uh, fooling themselves a little bit personally. Uh, but top two, go on. Who's getting automatics? Not quite winning the league, but who's getting automatics? Um, this might be a quite a shot, but I've gone for Stoke. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty certain certain people know I'd be happy about that. I've gone for Stoke <laughs> just because I think the way they progressed so quickly under Mar- uh, Martin O'Neill was amazing. I think yeah. that the mess they were in under Nathan Jones, I don't think it was really necessarily Nathan Jones's fault. I just think maybe the profile of the club and the job that he had on his hands was a very just kind of out of his depth, shall we say. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the players they brought in, they brought in Jake, Jacob Brown. I think he's going to be a good player for them for like two million, I think it was, for Barnsley. Obviously, done very well for Barnsley last year and they've got that money for him. Brought in Morgan Fox. I think it would be a good player from Chef Wednesday. They brought... Um, I'm a bit confused why they brought in Stephen Fletcher. I don't think they really need him. But it's a bit of a weird one. Bit of a weird one, and John Obi Mikel at 33. Um, I, th- I don't, I probably think he's going to be on some type of high wages. Probably, um, fair, James yeah. Chester as well. So, they were you questioned the signings they were making, but when you think of the play, the way they were, the, can I get my words out? Um, <laughs> the way they were going, like the way they were conceding goals late on and losing games and stuff like that, you've just got to think that they needed them type of players, have the yeah. experience and the level heads towards the end of the game, and have them smart decisions coming in. I think I don't know whether they've got Ben Akafobi back. I don't know whether they let you was on loan at Bristol City. I don't know. Some of the comments could say I think he was on loan. I think he was um, on loan. So yeah. if he's if he comes back, then that would be a good player for them to have up top as well. So no, I think Stoke are really going to improve this year, and I've got them for seconds. No, fair enough. Um, well, we have swapped our sixth place and second place predictions because I've gone with Norwich. Um, I do think Norwich will go up. Honestly, as the season has gone further and further through, and we've got nearer and nearer to the start of the season. I've been more and more impressed with their ability to keep hold of people. That, for me, was a big, big thing. You know, I thought they'd lose the likes of, you know, Cantwell, Buendia, like you said, Aarons, like, you know, all of these players that I thought would probably be on their way out. Um, I thought in my head, I thought if, if Pookie stays, great. I think that he will be a good player for them to, you know, keep hold of. And he proved he could really do it in the uh, the championship. And he did okay in the Premier League, obviously quite stages and quite parts of the season, but started off pretty well. I think Kieran, Kieran Dow is going to be a fantastic pickup for them. And I think we'll definitely yeah, get them goals really. as well. Um, and I think he will be a just a very, very good player to add to an already good looking championship team. I think mm. realistically, they've got a good chance of going up. Again, I think them and Brentford, I, I very nearly kind of swapped them around, but I stuck with my guns and, and kept with Norwich uh, in second place. Uh, just just because of their ability to keep hold of the players they've got already. If they can keep hold of, you know, 90% of that first team, then they've got an incredible looking championship side, a side that I would expect to get promoted. So, yeah, yeah I, I do think I'm, I'm confident in saying they're going to finish second if they keep hold of the players they've got now. If their squad is the same from now to the end of the season, or at least to January, then I think they're going to go up, for sure. Mm. Um, 
But that means we've both gone with the same team in first, right? We have, yeah. I've gone for Watford. Yep, Watford it is. I believe you have too. I think it kind of speaks for itself. Um, the team, the, the teams, the, the players they've still got there. I think they only, they've only lost the core really that's going to yeah. really affect them. But the players that they've got at the club really like Will Hughes and all this lot. I think that, I think if they don't come first, it's criminal. Um, because the levels they've got, like I don't know whether I thought realistically with the way they were playing, they would easily lose all their players. Like the championship is so much different to the Prem and the demands yeah. and stuff. I think that them players would have just not wanted to stay. Like Delafayu. Uh, all these players but no their squad is very good um, I think they brought in Ngaku as well so that's another player for the future they brought in which is very good I think he's a good player um, on loan they've got Glenn Murray which really confused me because he's like 37 it's a weird one um, a bit weird but yeah no I just think they're going to come first really because the quality they've got in their squad is amazing I think Semmer's going to really shine the championship this year uh, I think he needed that like the step down to really prove himself yeah yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, coming back from Udinese, they send like all their squad too. So Udinese is like the Italian Watford. Um, I think they're affiliated with them, so fair enough yeah. to them. Um, I think they've got Luis Suarez back, not the actual Luis Suarez, but the one that was at Zaragoza, I believe. He's on loan, on yeah. loan. So yeah, he'll come back and do well. But yeah, their squad is just very good, and the fact yeah. they beat Middlesbrough last night one 0 with how many players they had out. They were like 12, 13 players yeah. out. Showed they were, they've got the depth because they have got a massive squad. They've got a humongous squad. Yeah. Um, I do think they'll still lose a couple of players. Um, I think Saar will probably end up going somewhere. Um, Delafoe, maybe. I mean, if Delafoe stayed in the, in the championship, then uh, I think he would absolutely yeah. tear it up. I just think he's a quality player. But I think they've got a very experienced team. They've got a lot of players who have played a lot of games. Um, at X, Y, and Z, uh, how many clubs or wherever they've played. But I do think they've just got an incredibly good-looking squad uh, and probably the strongest squad in, in the league. Uh, I think anyone can look at that team and go, it's probably the strongest squad in the league. So mm. I think if they can keep on with at least a few players, then they'll definitely be a, a strong contender for top of the league. But I think they can even afford to lose a few players and get that money to potentially just bring in a few young players to bring through and, and like you say a few youngsters to get a chance in the championship and really flourish and, and shine and uh, yeah. look good definitely but uh, mate but that's there it. you have it that's our championship table predictions it I is. think it's uh, we've got a fairly like similar, similar sort of, table yeah similar sort of thing I'm going to try and get a graphic to the side of us and, and have our teams go through it so you guys can look at it all now in front of you um, but you know what Tom's like. So put your put your tables down below as well. Why not? Yeah, what, what, exactly. What you guys think as well. So. In the comments, definitely pop that down there. But I do want to say a massive thank you to James for taking part in this and for being a large majority of the uh, the brains behind this and and uh, giving us more in depth opinions no, don't, don't and more specific that. stuff. No, no, nah, nah, but mate, like I said, your your remembrance of you know transfers, ins, outs, and stuff. Mate, that ain't me. I can't remember. Mate, if I'm in front of a camera, I forget whatever's going on. So it just happens like that for me. Uh, but please do check out James. There'll be a link to all of his socials, his Twitch, his uh, podcast, his YouTube, the lot, all down below. Please go follow, sub, do what you've got to do. Because honestly, he's my guy. And uh, we need to show him the support, all of the support we have. All right. So thank you so much, James, for taking part in this. No worries, really man. Really appreciate, appreciate you coming it. in, man. Thank you as well uh, for having me on your podcast not too long ago. So definitely go and check that out. Uh, and all the other stuff on there as well. But thank you very much, guys, for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy this. Please do leave a like, like I said, if you enjoyed it. Comment down below with your predictions as well. If there's any other stuff you want to see me and James talk about, let us know in the comments because, like I said, obviously James got his podcast channel. We've got stuff that we can do in here as well. So plenty of stuff that we can do and uh, things we can discuss as well. Like I said, make sure you hit that sub button if you're new to the channel. Again, show James all the love you've got as well. But, guys, I want to say thank you very much for watching. I've been Tom. James has been James. You guys have been awesome. And I'll see you soon. So you yourselves. And of course, wash your hands in a bit. What? Nah, nah, his name is Hursty. Slap bald head, yeah, it'll probably hurt me. Bang top bins, yeah, it'll probably hurt you. Ginger, streamer, platform, YouTube. Drop a name in the chat, or say hello. Entertain, yeah, you already know. Capital H, yeah, I'm a read it slow. Hursty games, yeah, you already know.